Good evening. Welcome to worship at Plymouth Church. We are a people on a mission dedicated to the service of all and to the worship of God. Know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us pray. God of love, we come to you now in need of an anchor. Remind us this day of the sacred rituals and practices in our lives which keep us grounded in you. May these sacred words and the meditations of our hearts be inspired and hope-filled we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading today is from Psalm 86, 1 to 10 and 16 to 17. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You, O God, are good, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O God, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of trouble, I call on you, and you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you and glorify your name, for you are great and you do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me, be gracious to me, give me your strength, save the child of your serving maid, show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate may see it and be put to shame, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. May the Spirit add understanding to these sacred words. When we were talking in worship planning about Vespers this week, I was chatting with Kim about how this psalm is so psalmy. <laughs> it has so many classic themes from the psalms. God is good and abounding in steadfast love. There are none like you, O God. In the day of trouble, we call out to God. Sure enough, when I did a little digging, 
a little research. This psalm is mostly reused material. It's an anthology of some of the greatest hits of this sacred book of music and poetry. Some might find this imitation inferior, and others might recognize its genius. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes in my life, I find repetition to be boring, stale, lacking in the vibrancy. But other times I find repetition to be comforting or anchoring. I can see an experience which was old, hear something familiar, and something new can jump out and restore me, something I've never noticed before. During our season of quarantine, my household did a thorough Google search of all the Montessori kid tricks you can imagine. One day, I came downstairs to do school, school, (laughs) with our two-and-a-half-year-old, and I had all these gadgets. I had a bowl of pennies and a jar of clothespins and all these gadgets galore, and we had these great dreams of our quiet morning that we would share together, engrossed in our work. And it turned out that she finished each activity in less than two minutes, and we were back to square one. After a few weeks of experimentation with quarantine parenting, my husband, who is fantastic, decided that we would mainly be a little schoolhouse of art and nature. He would take her out almost every day, and they've explored every natural space in town. The turtle pond, the wetlands, the goose park, the lake, you name it, and they have been there. But the other space that really captures our two-year-old's imagination for more than two minutes is art. One day, she wanted to decorate her room, so they gathered all the paint and the paper, and they dove right in, and on each bright piece of construction paper, Charlie honed in on the right lower corner and proceeded to paint a gray-brown blob, because you know that color, the color that all the other colors make when they're smooshed together. That was her art process for the day. Then they would proceed up the stairs and tape the blob on her wall in her bedroom. Now, she repeated this exact process over 20 times, and in her bedroom to this day is an exhibit of brown blobs all located in the lower right corner. Her dad patiently walked her up and down the stairs every time she finished a painting. Now, it's amazing to me how these little ones in our lives, they can find an activity which gives them pleasure or joy, a new sort of practice they've discovered, and they repeat it over and over and over and over again, which is a joy of parenthood in quarantine. But this art practice reminded me of the power of repetition and ritual in our lives. When we hear that song or eat that meal or practice that tradition, it transports us beyond that place. It gets us out of our head, it gets us out of our everyday life. The psalmist knew that. She was weaving together these sacred traditions in a new way that tapped into the memory and ritual of her people. My grandma Louise died a few years ago, my mom's mom. She had congestive heart failure and she had a gradual decline. But miraculously, I was able to be with her the day before she died. She was able to mumble that day to my dad to ask him to scratch her back, to rub her muscles, and she was able to open her blue eyes to see me briefly. But that was about it. When we left, we asked to pray with her because, you see, my mom and my grandma had this beautiful practice in the later years when my mom would call to check in on her. They would say the Lord's Prayer at the end of their visit. Now, my grandma Louise wasn't very upfront about her faith, very vulnerable about it, but she, she faithfully played piano for the men's Bible study at her Methodist church for, gosh, 30, 40 years So that afternoon before we left, she wasn't able to engage very much, but she could mumble the words of the Lord's Prayer as we prayed together. And I've often found visiting with folks 
who struggle with dementia, that this is true of them too. When all else has failed, they can still access that song or that sacred, repeated ritual like the Lord's Prayer. Beloved, that is the power of ritual and repetition in our lives. It, there's something spiritually magic about it. It bypasses our mind and sinks right into our heart, our bones. It becomes a part of us. So this day, what are the practices of faith that you do over and over and over again? What are the life-sustaining ways of being in your life which can anchor you when all else fails? I think about our Plymouth Covenant, which we repeat every week, our traditions around the communion table and baptism, and the sacred music which has formed and shaped and lifted us. Think of these sacred ways when we, which we practice church together. In this time, we are challenged to come up with new patterns and new sacred practices. And so go now, beloved, remembering the thing that makes you sit in awe before God and repeat it over and over again until it becomes a part of you, so that it becomes a healing lifeline in times of trouble. And in that practice, let us close now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, beloved, may you go remembering the prayers and songs and practices which have sustained you. And may we commit to find even more. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the divine countenance among you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.